day 91. Yesterday was my three months anniversary. That's what I realized right now. So <laughs> I wanted to talk about some of the topics I learned after also watching um, some video um, from Courtney Luna that I want to address a little bit. But there are many topics. <laughs> they just uh, got in, into my mind. So liver, raw milk, fasting, sports, uh, developments of the MS and these kind of things. So I'm just going to try to sum it a little bit up what I learned and what I learned by my experience and what I learned from others. So um, first things first, liver. Um, you have to be a little bit careful how much liver you eat because you can have too much liver so you will have too much of vitamin E and other stuff. So there are amounts you should eat. So but what how you eat it there are very different opinions. Some eat every day just a little bit some eat uh, three times a week a little bit more <laughs> and some eat uh, once a week like a lot and some don't eat liver at all because they say they're never gonna eat uh, liver i think it's lisa she said it also and a lot of other things so there are many people who don't eat liver at all because they say they're fine they're doing good they don't need it so for me personally, everybody who watched my videos, um, is Dr. Chafee's advice uh, I should eat every day a little bit of a liver and um, once a week then a little bit more. <laughs> Just the first three months. So I think that makes sense because in my case, and it depends on what is your case, my case is I come from a vegan diet and then from an American diet. So I do need to nourish my body and fill it up with the good stuff. <laughs> so that's basically what, what we are doing right now. And because of my MS, I do have to take a little bit more care and that's the healing process he recommended to me and it makes sense for me in the end. So that's what I'm what I'm doing now for, since he advised it to me, was it three weeks ago? So that's one thing I did implement. I like every day, a um, little bit of liver. I think it was 30 grams, 40 grams around about. So um, I'm feeling, feeling, I don't feel anything. <laughs> I honestly don't feel anything. I do have a lot of more energy, but it's not based on the liver uh, because the days when I had the most energy, I didn't have liver with me the last couple three days. I just, yeah, one, once, yeah, I had one liver with me, and then three days I didn't have liver uh, because I didn't have it in the camper. So with the liver part, you know, there are so many different opinions, and you just have to figure out what is uh, what you think is the best for you. I do think that people tend, we all tend to take too much supplements or too much of, of things without even knowing if our blood is okay and if we even need it, you know. Um, for example, yeah, you need to take more magnesium or more this or more that um, without knowing what's actually our baseline. So because it's very expensive. I told about my blood works, I paid like 500 euros just for a little bit of a baseline with most of the stuff I'm having and um, the irony was that iron and vitamin K is my very very low like critically low uh, things I'm having everything else was an average um, thing and Dr. Chafee said that the average is not right with uh, vitamin B12 and vitamin D so these things are what I'm supplementing because uh, the vitamin D and the vitamin K also work together. So yeah, I, I don't know why it is my doctor does not, does not know why it is. She told me also that, you know, the blood work is also a little bit tricky because it's just the momentum. And sometimes it's, especially with the iron, when you change your diet and these kind of things, it takes more than 10 weeks to show in the blood works the difference. So I did have some infusion of vitamin C and uh, iron because it's something my doctor personally recommends out of the vitamin, vitamin C just to have the infusions two times a year. It just helps not being sick. So since I wasn't sick at all, um, like really sick, having fever and these kind of things, I think it's a good approach. Um, the other thing is sunburn. <laughs> sunburn carnivores don't burn in the sun no <laughs> thank you whoever put this stupid things out here i was camping and uh it, it, it is not a strong sun at all so it's not like i'm laying down 12 hours you know to, at, at uh, 12 o'clock in uh, i don't know 
uh, Spanish sun. It's really, really low sun. And I was laying there without sunscreen at all because, you know, I'm not carnivore. I can manage that. And my son as well, because it was really, it was windy. It was um, cloudy. There was no big sun at all. So I thought it's going to be fine. And we maybe been one hour, one hour. And he was even in the water and he burnt. I burnt. I had a red face like a paprika. So no <laughs> no just no i don't know uh why why people say that <laughs> maybe it's when you're years in carnivore i don't know but i can tell you from my experience it seems not true <laughs> because now i have like all these uh skin peeling <laughs> i think you saw it in my last video my skin looks a little bit uh strange so it's because my my skin is peeling <laughs> from the sunburn and it hurt it. It's, it was like really burning my skin. I never had that before. Like not this sunburn burning. It was like really prickling burning. I can't explain it. So it was not very pleasant. I do get that that we don't want the the chemicals from the sun um, creams. So if you have any alternatives to the sun cream or which one do you recommend? Maybe some of you did already the research. I would be happy if you posted it to me. So that's one thing. Um, then I realized with the raw milk, that's like the most controversial controversial <laughs> thing on carnivore because nobody's agreeing on that particular thing. Uh, some say, you know, drink it every day. Some say don't drink it at all. It's just for little babies. So they will grow up and these kind of things. So um, yeah, everybody I think should decide for themselves. Um, so one thing I do get that there are a lot of countries where it's, um, it's illegal to sell raw milk. I do get the why, because as soon as people are in contact with products, you are scared that they're going to do stupid things with it, even if it's healthy, just to make it more, um, that they make more money out of it. So you put the, the people in danger with the bacteria and these kind, with the bad bacteria as well. So, or, 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 you know, mold and these kind of things. So I do get that a little bit why it's forbidden maybe, but, um, I, I think it's if you have a source who you trust, um, I think it's fine, honestly. So because of the, you know, should you cook it or should you not cook it? So I talked to the farmers where I get my milk and then he said, yeah, they're obligated to write down that you have to cook it, but they don't cook it. They drink it like this every time and also their friends. So that's what we did actually. But the big but, <laughs> the big but. I cannot lie. Um, it's the the sugar in the milk. So it's really funny because yesterday I came back home and my mom made some syrup for her friends. So we do have a, a garden and we do have a lot of things she's growing also by herself. She loves it. And she did some, um, I unfortunately don't know the English word for it, but she did, you know, syrups. And normally you put sugar into the syrup so they will, you know, do their work. And uh, she tried it with milk sugar. It's like pure milk sugar. You can buy it in my country. So she tried it with that. And um, she said, yeah, it's, it's working amazing. It really tastes like this. So maybe it's carnivore. I said, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's still, you know, I, I don't want to drink anything sweet or sweetened. So that's what, not what I'm going to do. But she, after she, she created this milk sugar for pouring it in, uh, on the bottom it crystallized, the milk sugar crystallized and it made it like caramel little things. And uh, then she said, yeah, try it just, you know, to have the taste. And it was like sugar. It was just like sugar. It was pure sugar for me, you know. They say it's not that sugary, but for me it was like really like one-to-one -one caramel popcorn with the Werther's uh, bonbons, like really this caramel sugary thing. And that was my personal click moment, really, because you know that there is, you know, milk sugar and you know that, but you don't taste it. So you never you taste it that much. So you never realize it, how, how, what, what, it, what the sugar part in this is, you know, and then I tasted it. And I was like, whoa, that's actually the milk, you know, I didn't realize it that much. And that was like a little bit click moment I had. It, it's really, 
it's a lot. <laughs> so I do get that point of that it will spike your everything and you, you will have maybe cravings and these kind of things because after tasting it, it's a little bit more, I had this little epiphany moment, so I did understand it a little bit better. So milk should maybe really be, depending on how you work, you know, if you, if this helps you to stay carnivore, oh my God, do it, do it every day. If it's your only satisfaction that is left, <laughs> like with me somehow, my pork rinds with milk and cinnamon is my only satisfaction that is left and it keeps me going on on carnivores sometimes, then um, I, I'm, I'm doing it because I will fall off the wagon and eat something completely else or my protein cookies if I don't use then this. Um, so yeah, that's, I think everybody needs to figure it out for themselves. Um, but in moderation, everything that's dairy, it's probably a good approach to have, but it's tougher and you know, it's getting more boring and the meat versions, people do have that. So everything that keeps you on track for carnivore and you are a carnivore when you do 70% carnivore, you are a carnivore, no matter what you do the rest of 30%. So so don't don't think about that um and yeah that's that's with the dairy parts i realized for me a little bit uh i did have honey a lot of honey actually in the camper because we we have there where we did camp my country is very very kind of worry surrounding but they are all vegans it's really strange we do have the most amazing farmers it's actually uh the world's leading um, it was an article my son um, had to learn in school. It's Austria, it's the leading country in the world with how they treat their animals in farming and like this organic approaches. So we do have amazing sources here, you know, amazing sources. Of course, they're more expensive, but in the end, we do have them. And with also with honey and milk products and uh, meat and everything we need on carnivore or can eat in carnivore. Also with fruits, actually. So we do have very good sources here. Um, and we did have a lot of imker, if it's also called in English, uh, where they have the bees and do it, do it by themselves. So we, we can go there, we see the bees, we see how they're doing it and you can buy the fresh honey. It tastes so good. So I uh, I bought it because the lady was so nice. <laughs> you know, we're renting there, we're talking, and then she has honey, and I said, oh, that's a beautiful gift, just also for my mom, for her Mother's Day. I, I love to, you know, give something that people like, so it's, it's honey. Um, and then I had also, and my son loves it too, and he loves it with the pork rinds now, with the, with the honey, and he, he he eats sometimes the milk with the honey, so it's just a little treat. Um, and I did just have too much. I did have too much. And um, but yesterday I did have it here and I didn't eat it at all. So mm, yeah, it's it's a little bit tough. Honey is really tricky, really really tricky for me. Maybe for some people it's not, and they can eat a little bit of a scoop and that's it, and they're happy. For me, it does trigger to eat a lot just to to feel feel satisfied. So I did gain a little bit weight. It's not. It's significant, but I didn't also lose like anything. So I'm I'm really like stuck in the middle, but I do have a lot more muscles because I feel my body's really hard. Like you can, <laughs> you know, normally it was like, <laughs> but now it's like, <laughs> so we we do have muscles. Uh, we do don't um, have this big visual thing, but that's one thing also I realized and I wanted to talk about because Courtney Luna um, uploaded a video where she explained about her, um, she don't want to focus on the losing weight part and she even stuck for a year with her weight and she couldn't lose it. And um, yeah, she doesn't know why it is and she was at a retreat with a lot of our doctors, just Sean Baker and, and Kilts and um, yeah, uh, Kelly Hogan also and a lot of other people. So uh, check her video out, it's very interesting. I had the feeling um, because she did a cookbook as well and she was focusing on a cookbook and from my experience, from my personal experience, it was my feeling also watching her videos is in the beginning when I tried a lot of recipes and tried always to do something different, it's more likely to overeat for me personally because I then try everything and I oh and this looks so good and I need to cook it. I'm not hungry but I need to cook it and then I need to taste it. and. 
So this phase was really struggling for me as well, just gaining weight because I wanted to try everything and then I wanted to try it immediately. So um, I had the feeling that maybe for her, maybe it's also the same thing, but I, I, I don't want to talk for her, but it was just my feeling watching her videos that because of the cookbook, it maybe also ha have triggered a little bit of these eating habits, which, which it was for me personally in the beginning, trying out a lot of things that also she, she cooked. So, um, that's one thing I realized as much as I keep it simple, uh, I tend to have aversions a little bit, but if I have other things and just let go and then keep it cool, it's easier for me to go back on track and so just to have, for example, just a yogurt day or just eggs or these kind of things and then go back to the meat, just to have this a little bit variation and ups and downs. It's more easier for me than to always figure out what to cook next or what to create a little bit more of variety. It's just a little bit of these kind of things. Uh, I can tell you, I saw it also in my son. It's very interesting because he, what did he have? One day he didn't want to eat meat, so he had tuna because we were in the, at the camper, you know, we don't, we didn't have a lot with us. So we did, he did have uh, the tuna and some pieces of cheese and that was it. And after, uh, this face he was craving and he was like oh, yesterday he said I'm craving so much of a steak I said really you want a steak and he, yeah I'm craving so much steak so then I, I made him the steak and he was eating it so I think there are just faces we all have where we want to eat something else so uh, I'm always wondering just looking at Sean Baker and these people just eating every day the same steak <laughs> I don't know if this is true it's just his videos um, but uh, yeah that's that's what I think it's it's cool if you can manage to do that um, I, I can't I really get this meat versions right now sometimes so I do like to have this variety with a little bit of fish sometimes and, and dairy and um, yeah um, that's one thing I realized. Also the focusing on the weight loss and with the scale of number or even the inches and these kind of things and photos, because photos, when I see my photos, I do see the difference or my muscles are a little bit showing up, but not that much. And I think that the frustration level can be a little bit more on carnivore because you're doing the right things. You're doing so much more than ever before, probably. And if you don't see the results getting there after even now three months, for example, where you wanted to be or where other people's are, it's also health wise, it's tough. It's tough. I don't think that's necessary that then it's tough. Like I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop for me. It's not at all. Never. Um, because I just feel it's right. And I just like it. I really enjoy eating that way. I really enjoy it. And I think that's the most important thing not to see it as a diet, but to see it as an enjoyment and it's fun. It's doing me a kind of purpose and it's easy. Um, and I, and I do like my steaks and I do like my eggs and I do like these things, but they're still causing me issues along the road with a lot of things, you know, and depending on what I'm eating, last time it was butter, it's, it's causing me nausea, like dizziness and I'm feeling sick a little bit and these kind of things. So, but I love butter. So it's really, really hard to find the, the tweaks and the things that are working. And that's what I'm trying to, to experience, to see what can I eat and when can I eat that I am have the optimum. And one thing I can tell you what I discovered, what the best worked for me in the last couple of days actually, it was the combination to eat at about 9 and 10 in the morning, roundabout, to eat ground beef, just a handful, uh, to eat that much piece of goat cheese or um, sheep cheese. And yeah, it's basically because the egg yolks are not very relevant for me in this case. So to eat that in the morning, it keeps me a long, long time going on so I can eat at 2 or maybe 3. And to have a snack, like at 12, like something smaller, like butter, if I'm at the office, or if I'm craving really something sweet and I see it's triggering my cravings, to have the, just the, um, pork, um, pork things with uh, milk and cinnamon sometimes, or even have uh, just fat trims, just beef fat trims or even have the pork fat trims. So um, these kind of things is just in the middle and then to have a big steak and uh, um, with goat cheese, it's, yeah, in the evening. So that, that worked the best for me. Why? Because I, I felt 
the higher protein approach in some days are really helping me with my workouts and I'm really motivated to do them. I'm never, never, ever, since I'm doing it, I'm, I'm forcing myself to do any kind of workouts. And I'm not the person that usually was in this position. I love sport. I was the opposite. I was like, I hate sport. I don't want to do sport. So I'm coming from this area and to have this motivation, it really shows me that, that something's changing just from my body itself. So, but as soon as I at the end work, I need more fat. So I really then love the butter, but it really costing me a little bit to feel sick. But just the fat trims are sometimes not enough. It's just not enough fat. I don't know why, maybe it's, you know, just because the, when you cook them, also the fat goes away and I can't eat it without, yeah, maybe I have to try it actually, because Marcus did suggest to make it in a pan and it's tasting so much better, but still the oil is going out. Um, at the tallow, you know, and then I use the tallow for, to cook everything else, especially also in the ground beef, so I get the fat back. But um, the the fat trims, they are not having more fat in them than in the air fryer, but it's still, I think, not enough. But maybe I will try really to make it really short in the hot. He recommended hot pan and just to put it in and just have it really short cooked. I didn't try that because they look disgusting. <laughs> When I, when I make them so and they look more crispy crunchy when I do it longer but I have to try it I will try it because I did have fat trims in the morning and liver and some Italian sausage I just wanted to try so that's also what I said before if you have new things you wanted to try you are more likely to eat them even if you're not hungry so that happened to, to me in the morning I just wanted to try it because I knew I bought it and um, that's you know when I eat even if I don't want to eat it at all um, yeah, that's basically a little bit what I learned. So also with my MS symptoms, you know, they are back a little bit, I have to say. Um, my hands are uh, struggling again. Um, I went for a jog yesterday. So another thing, when you're on carnivore, the best approach on sports everybody's recommending is, and I know, I know why every kind of diet can be tough. So your body needs a gentle approach sometimes when you're in the beginning, especially. And it's better to do, you know, weight training is just a little bit easier also for the body and giving you the strength you need <laughs> to, to move further. Um, and to have a very gentle approach, maybe with yoga and Pilates and these kind of things and meditations. But um, my, I, I don't know what is happening in my body. So maybe it's, uh, I, I really don't know, because my energy level is through the roof. It's just insane. And it's getting me aggressive because I have no, no uh, where to put it, you know. And because I used to be uh, in the Muay Thai, in kickboxing and these kind of things, it was my energy relief. And I cannot do it from the movements because it's, you know, very tough for me to, to move my body like I used to. And it's hurting me. So... I don't have this relief anymore, also from stress parts. So I'm getting aggressive because everything is getting in, in, in to myself. So that's why it's important for me to walk 10 to 20,000 steps at least. But the problem is that, you know, who has time to do that? When you work like eight hours and you have to pick up the kid, you have to, to cook, you have to take care of them, you have to learn with them, you then have to maybe clean up and do things. It's really tough to get these steps in. Um, and that's why I think, I thought, let's say it like this, that running would be the best because I can hit a little bit more of these steps and energy relief, but it's, it's tough for my body because my MS is making my legs just being like full of stones, make my hands feel like they're getting completely, it's like actually right now it's really bad. Um, so I'm, I do really have issues with, them as triggering and my doctors think it's the lesion that is located especially here so it's it's infected my hands and my legs and when i'm jumping or doing things that are a little bit more like um uh running running and jumping movements which is more like my head um it's a little bit more tough to <laughs> i just realized how pervert this sounded but no not that kind of activity but um it's just, you know, having this um, too much of a movement that it hurts and then the hands and my legs uh, seem to block. So that's something I, I just want to improve because I want to be able just to have a little run with my son. I'm, I don't want to run a marathon. 
maybe I do, <laughs> but you know, it's not my goal to, to be a runner because that's not, you know, what's, what's really good for my body actually right now. But I, I do enjoy being outside and having this quick energy reliefs without having to prepare something. So I think the most important part with sport is to have it at home, to have it accessible, to have it easy going, which makes it for you possible to do it every day or no matter what, just to do a few stretchings, a few uh, little weights. You, you don't have to buy anything, you know, take a water bottle and just do this. This is very effective, especially when you have a liter bottle of water, a lot of also my CrossFit people, they do use uh, them to make really little sudden sudden moves like this, just you know to have your mobilities, especially in your hands, because these are these little muscles as well, which are <laughs> you will feel it when you have just a little bit of weight. It will be tough to do it, so don't worry about it. Uh, that's also what I'm learning in my personal training with my CrossFit trainer. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm gonna show you some some exercises someday. I, I just can't figure out how to make it look, you know, lookable. <laughs> I look like a sack of potatoes when I'm doing sport. I thought maybe my son, I I, I will you know show him and teach you with him doing that. <laughs> I think that would be easier. But uh, I have to figure out how to, ma to make it manage it because uh, also my physiotherapist um, things I'm doing are extremely crucial for me. Every morning if I don't do it, I'm in pain. As soon as I do it, I'm without pain in my lower back. So that's why I really need to show you what I learned over the years. And my, my, my son, my, my cousin is a physiotherapist. So they teach me a lot, a lot, a lot the last couple of years. And I figured out what's really the best and combination of, the, of them all. And that's what I wanted to show you once. Um, yeah, uh, it's a long video, <laughs> but uh, I think you, you know, I have a little bit of a big overview and after 90 days. Um, so I do have a lot of energy, extremely. It's getting more and more and it relieves. Uh, I do work better on a high, <laughs> my dog. Uh, on a higher protein approach when I have time to move I do work better on a high fat approach if I need my brain to work at work in an IT uh, office um, I do need liver every day B12 and vitamin D as supplements I did the blood work and I'm gonna do it when I'm six months in and I'm gonna do the DEXA scan as well after six months. So we do have a comparison. So we do have a little bit of data, data, whatever. Um, and to compare uh, where we're going, um, I do have still things that are going very well and that I don't like from, from meat perspectives. My histamine is still sometimes kicking in, even with the DAO, the DAO uh, pills, um, especially with the ground beef, but I love ground beef. Uh, so ground beef is really my, my magic hands, <laughs> the best. Uh, ground beef and uh, goat cheese, these are my totally the best because they just stop my cravings, they do. I don't know what it is about it, but that's what's stopping my cravings. And uh, yeah, so right now I did eat at eight. So it's two hours ago and I do feel hungry again. So after just having liver and the fat, you know, you really need to figure out that yesterday I just had fat and egg yolks in the evening just to see how, how this is going. But I was so hungry then after. So it's tough to figure out what works for you in the best. And if you should do fasting, fasting for me was very bad. Actually, for me, my body just, the energy level was dropping so bad. I had so much headaches and it's about, you know, getting used to these things. Yes, uh, of course, it's always about getting used to these things and then it will get better at some point. It's like the, the keto flu in the beginning. So if you fast, it will be the same thing. But uh, stop it, <laughs> my dog. Um, but yeah, I, I don't have right now the time and the energy to to feel like this. And I don't like the feeling at all. It's even different than the keto flu. It's just, I feel just weak and I feel amazing when I'm eating. So why should I change that? <laughs> you know, why should I, uh, if I feel very good when I'm eating enough and eating the right things. So I rather have the approach right now just to figure out what works the best for me and how I can get to the point where I have just one meal a day, because that's something I do realize is the best approach. Snacks, by the way, best tip I can give you, 
if you want to stop snacking, watch first on YouTube Secret Eaters. Watch it, then you will understand. It's really fun to watch. So watch it on YouTube. Um, then you will see how much of secret eating we are doing and why we really uh, doing stupid shit with our progress. And the second thing I can really recommend it to you is brush your teeth every time you eat one little bite because that's how your brain and you will learn so oh, i ate again yeah. and if you brush your teeth like 10 times a day then you say oh my god what the hell am i doing why do i eat 10 times a day you know why am i eating constantly so that will also a little bit help you because that's what i realized and that's what i'm i'm experimenting a little bit because when i do brush my teeth after every bite i'm taking which is not my main meal um my my course it's like what the hell again <laughs> <laughs> so and the benefits you'll have for teeth you know but yeah no it, it really helps a little bit with realizing what you're doing because sometimes we just go to the fridge or eat or something and then we don't even realize it so that helps maybe a little bit and uh, my sparkling water i do have the soda stream that's like my lifesaver i have every day so much i can't drink normal water i just can't i don't know why but the the sparkling water is really saving my life i love it so much <laughs> so now I have to work or go for a walk with my dog because I don't want to work <laughs> today. I'm not in the mood for walking, not at all. But I have a workshop uh, at 1 to 5, an AI workshop, so the next three days. And I'm not really looking forward to it <laughs> because I just want to be outside. I just want to move my body and not sit in front of a computer. So yeah. Um... Let me know your best tips and tricks you have and how you're doing on your journey. And uh, see you tomorrow as always.